All right, so we've covered wastegate, we've covered reference leak bypass. Now let's knock out the single group port. This is probably my favorite, and the reason it's my favorite is it's the simplest way that we can let the ECU actually control how much boost that the engine's going to make. Um, the thing about a single through port is it's easily used in either a closed loop or an open loop situation, and I'm going to do a video on open versus closed loop um, shortly. The thing to remember about that is it doesn't always have to be when we're talking about our air fuel ratio. Open versus closed loop means a lot of different applications. So let's get rolling with this and we'll wrap around with that later. Uh, single three port uses your existing boost pressure or CO2 depending on what kind of application you're, you're using. Typically CO2 is reserved for the drag strip uh, in a car that's going to make you know, um, single passes and not have a lot of street use that's going to require you to keep filling up the CO2 bottle. That said, that doesn't mean you, you can't use CO2 in a street car. Um, it just means that it's one added thing you got to take care of. And this is one of the reasons why I don't um, like uh, meth injection systems is you can run out of meth. Um, when you're talking about CO2, it's something that's very rarely going to run out. The, the, the volume you go through is so low that the problem is when you forget to check it, um, now you don't have a way to make boost. So if you're using a, a streetcar setup, you can use the compressor pressure, and that's going to be a setting in your Terminator X or your Holly applications where you either choose fixed or compressor. If you use compressor, that means that you have a variable boost source right down here for the three port. If you used fixed, then that means that you're using a regulated set pressure from your CO2 bottle. If, you car, if your car has air ride, you can, you can use the, the onboard compressor and use onboard uh, air tank you know, for that. Uh, you can use your nitrous bottle. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you can actually uh, set this up. But the first thing we're going to run down is doing it without CO2. We're going to use the compressor pressure and uh, hopefully this will make a lot of sense. So I've redrawn my wastegate here, uh, making things a little clearer so I had a little more room for the three port and then we also added ourselves a cute little turbo down here um, and this is gonna make hopefully a little more sense. Um, I think I referenced before that the line coming off the turbo is where you need to input for your reference pressure. Um, you can do it post intercooler off the manifold in some cases, if there's not a lot of pressure drop. Um, but the one thing that you can't do, and I learned this the hard way pretty recently, is you can't feed the reference with the turbo, then go through the intercooler and up to the engine, and then feed the MAC valve with the, uh, the engine boost. But the reason is, you're always going to have a higher pressure coming straight out of the turbo than you're going to see in the manifold and the, and the reference is always going to outrun the dome. You'll never make any more boost. And if you do, it's going to be erratic and hard to control and not a good situation. So let's add a reference line. It's going to come down through here and go right into the outlet of the turbo. This is a metaphorical place. It doesn't have to be right on the outlet of the turbo. A lot of turbos actually have a boss for you to do it there, and it's a great place to put it. I highly recommend it if you have the option. That said, if you don't, you can put it in your pipe right here, just past it. You can put it in the pipe right before it goes into the into the intercooler if your wastegate uh, is kind of near that due to, to the way that the, the piping puts it. If it makes it convenient, you can put it off of that. Just don't put it after the intercooler and don't put it directly off the manifold if you can help it. Um, obviously, this is a fringe setup, but if you are running something that you got a turbo and it's going directly into the manifold, then yeah, okay, you can use the manifold boost because the turbo is literally aimed right into the manifold. You're not going to have a big pressure drop. Okay, so what's the three port do? The three port very simply is at this time, if we're at 0% duty cycle, that means that the Holly has an output that is commanding a set duty cycle based on whatever parameter you want to set up. And we can talk about that stuff in probably a later video. That's more on the, the ECU side. 
at a 0% duty cycle, the source is blocked and the output can vent. The way that this gets plumbed is you T into the reference line to feed the source and then you come from the output to the dome. Now what this does is in, at 0%, that means that the dome has effectively been into atmosphere and you're effectively making waste gate pressure at 0% duty cycle. Let's change this to 50%. All right, so now at 50%, that means that half the time, and this is, we're talking in terms of frequency, half the time the source pressure is going to the output and half the time it's going to the vent. So what does that mean for us? If the source is half the time going to the output, that means that half of whatever is in the reference line, roughly, is going to the dome. And this is kind of a moving target, and you'll, you'll find that it'll settle but if we've got 10 PSI in the reference line, and let's say, let's put our wastegate spring in here, let's say we've got a 10 pound spring, then that means that we're cracking the wastegate right now, right? We're, we're opening up. If I'm making 10 PSI, and I go ahead and half of that 10 now becomes 15 PSI on top, Excuse me. That's a 10 pound spring, and we're going to add 5 psi on top. PSI. Okay. Now we effectively have roughly 15 pounds of force working on the diaphragm. It holds the wastegate shut. We make a little more boost because of that. This turns the 10 psi reference into, let's say, it's going to become 15. Now we get half of 15, this becomes 17. You would think that it would run away. It doesn't. It's going to find a spot that it's going to settle, and this is still going to open. So effectively what you're trying to do is command the duty cycle on the solenoid that you want to make that amount of boost that it makes for any given duty cycle. And that duty cycle can be a, a, a random number, really, because what, what we're doing is creating a sum total of what the spring is doing and what your boost pressure is doing to the dome minus the reference minus the back pressure. So where we're really going with this is whether it's open loop, whether it's closed loop, you got to actually work on your setup and figure out what a given duty cycle is going to make. Um, the, the biggest thing to remember here too is you're only gonna, the, the minimum amount of boost that you can make is whatever you would make on Wayscape. So if you want to know what the minimum is, what I always do is say, what, what spring have you got in it? Or um, how much does it make on gate only? And then I'll know right out of the gate, when I start commanding a set boost, I've got to start my table for the, uh, the solenoid at least above that. There's no way that I can make any less than, in this case, 10 pounds of boost. Uh, the other thing you need to know about uh, the, the wastegate solenoid or the, the MAC valve, whatever you want to call it, the way that this system works, this is kind of getting into our, our ECU, but you, you need to understand this. The way PWM works is it pulses. It pulses the ground. So at 50%, that means that we have an equal amount of on time to off time. This would be a 50% square wave. And the frequency that you set, often for these uh, MAC valves, is somewhere between 50 and 40 hertz. That means that it's going to cycle that many times per second. If you turn it up too high, the valve won't ever move. And if you turn it down too low, it'll be very coarse. And a lot of times the valve still won't move. Um, the next thing is, let's say we've got, let's say we've got 75%. We've got 75%. All right, so now we got to adjust our square wave, right? So we're on for three quarters of the time and we're off for a quarter. So we're on for three quarters, off for a quarter. On for three quarters, off for a quarter. What that amounts to is not always 75% or three quarters of whatever your, your reference pressure is going to be. And the reason that is, 
is mainly because there's actually a, a mechanical device in here. There's a, there's a pintle that has to actually move based on the electrical current that you send through a coil that acts like a, a magnet. It is a magnet and will move the pintle. If you get over about 80% and you get under uh, about 20%, that's basically the same thing as all the way on and all the way off. So you, most of your resolution is gonna occur between 20 and 80, and it's probably gonna be the best around 50. Um, you just gotta know that going in. It might be a deal where at 80% you command, um, you know, you're trying to get 20 pounds of boost, and if you command 100%, you still get 20 and a half pounds of boost. Um, that just means, it doesn't mean that 80% is not doing its job, it means that all the way on is gonna be 20 and a half pounds of boost. There's, there's nothing more you can do about that. At that point, the only thing that you can do is switch to a larger spring where your, your minimum uh, boost is now gonna be higher, you're gonna shift the whole curve up, or you can go to a four port, which leads to the next video.